2014 harvest is just beginning in Nebraska. When combines finish picking this season's crop, the open ground could provide producers with an additional opportunity to pick up value from those acres. As we've previously told you, UNL research has shown that grazing corn stalks can positively affect the following year's soybean crop. 18 years of UNL research has shown a soybean yield increase of two bushels per acre after cows take away some of that corn residue. Earlier this week, we talked with UNL Extension Beef Specialist Rick Rasby about how to determine the amount of residue in a field and how much should be taken off. We think that, uh, that uh, corn stalk uh, residue is uh, an opportunity for cow-calf producers to uh, not only uh, uh, lower feed costs, our annual feed cost, but also uh, corn residue is a pretty good feed resource for, for beef cattle. How do you determine how much residue is in a given field? Well, we've done quite a few experiments, and so uh, we've got a pretty good handle on the amount of, uh, of uh, stem or stock, uh, cob and husk and leaf that's left out there based on a bushel uh, of corn. And so uh, when you take a look at it, there's about 18 pounds of stem uh, per bushel of corn about 5.8 to 6 pounds of cob per bushel of corn, and then about 16 pounds of husk and leaf per bushel of corn. And so we, we know pretty much how much residue is produced from a bushel of corn. Once you know that, how do you determine then how many cows you put out there and how long you leave them there? Yeah, so our recommendation would be uh, to remove half the husk and leaf. So half of that husk and leaf, so that's 16 pounds of husk and leaf per bushel of corn, and we'd recommend grazing about six or eight pounds of husk and leaf. And so, um, we know cattle in corn stock fields uh, are, are selective grazers. Of course, they'll select corn first because it's pretty palatable and pretty nutritious, but they'll not like the stem or the cob, and uh, they'll select the husk and leaf over the stem and the cob, and uh, that's because husk and leaf are fairly palatable, uh, at least more palatable than the uh, cob and the, uh, and the stem, but also they're fairly high in nutrition. And so the idea would be that we'd like to basically target cattle uh, in a crop residue grazing situation to eat the husk and leaf and of that husk and leaf remove about half of it. Now the uh, crop producer is going to be concerned about probably two things, the effect on subsequent yield and compaction that might ensue from cattle uh, walking out on the dirt or wet dirt. So to answer the first que one question, the compaction, we, we've we done 21 years we haven't seen compaction. and. Um, uh, I think that's because during that winter season as you get warm days, you get cold days, and I think there's enough thawing and heaving that you don't see compaction. Uh, the other thing would be is that we understand that we need to add some organic matter back into the soil. And so that's the reason why we, we wouldn't recommend taking off the cob, wouldn't recommend taking off the uh, stem, uh, but focus that uh, grazing uh, situation on the husk and the leaf. And then, uh, Rick, what does it show for uh, yield on uh, corn or soybeans after? You know, we've, you know, that's a question, that's a good question and a question that we asked many, many years ago and started collecting yield data uh, on uh, uh, fields that we've grazed and we've basically not grazed. And, um, you know, we've got quite a bit of data, 18 to 21 years of data at one location, about five to six years of data at another location. And if you go corn, soybean rotation, we don't see any any, uh, any depression in yield in the soybeans that following year. Uh, we also don't see any depression in the corn yield the year after that. And so we feel that if you graze according to our recommendations that you'll not see a, a reduction in subsequent yield of both soybeans and of corn. Should I ask if there are any extra nutrient requirements uh, to put out along with stocks as cattle are grazing? You know, our data would say that, you know, uh, if you got spring calving cows and they go out in pretty good body condition, I'm talking about body condition score five, they'll maintain and, and maybe even gain a little bit of uh, body condition without supplementation. They'll for sure maintain based on our grazing recommendation. Uh, if you've got calves out there, basically it's the amount of uh, what kind of targeted average daily gain do you need or you want to, want to get. And so if you get into that situation, uh, we've got some nice data that you can almost program feed those cattle or those calves out on corn residue. Uh, this amount of distiller's grains will give you this amount of gain. And so we've got that pretty well pegged as well. So um, from a supplementation standpoint, it depends if there's cows or if there's calves. And you'd always want to supplement salt and mineral when you're out on crop residue. Snow or ice a concern? You know, ice is a bigger concern than snow. You know, cattle will actually go through snow. And in fact, I've seen them graze crop residue, especially if that snow's fairly fluffy and not, not real wet, you know, six to eight inches 
but when you start getting ice, it packs that residue back uh, down next to the soil, and it's just difficult for cows to, to graze that kind of, uh, in that kind of situation. On the Market Journal website, we'll link to UNL's corn stock grazing calculator, which can help producers determine the value of corn stocks.